Hello YouTubers, this is Anubifire. As a content creator, my quality and working to improve video production is super important to me. You come here to spend time with me and I should always try to get you the very best visuals and the cleanest audio possible. The studio was built to help me achieve this. The photography and audio gear adds up quickly, but does a microphone actually need to be expensive? Is there a price point of diminishing return that the end user may not actually know what gear you're using unless they physically see you using it? I could argue that yes, my gear choices are an investment in my work, but can I get close to pro at a reduced price point? Since the pandemic, we've seen a shift in focus where more people operate from home. As part of your home office or gaming setup, why not invest a little bit more? Over the years, I've looked for the right gear for the situation. Lavalier microphones are really good for recording more than one person in an interview that's face to face. Desk or arm mounted microphones are very good for voiceover, voice chat, or virtual meetings. Neat Audio is a brand as part of the larger Turtle Beach Corporation. I just reviewed the Velocity One Yoke and it's really good. That's linked up for you right now. Mr. Skipper Wise founded Neat and his name could sound familiar if you're interested in audio. He's the CEO of Neat, but he's also the co-founder of Blue Microphones, the one who made the Yeti series and Snowball Microphones. Neat also has Mr. David Angres as an executive. David has been part of Adam Audio, the Harmon Group and AKG. With people like this in charge, I was really intrigued when I saw the MSRP around $170 for their top tier King B2 XLR microphone. We don't care too much about packaging here, providing it's overbuilt enough to protect the item as it arrives to you. There was nothing alarming here with a boxed box, uh, some thick styrofoam, and that was shaped to hold everything in place. That box includes the microphone, a shock mount, and a threaded adapter. There are no provisions to use this microphone without the shock mount as they do not include a second mounting option, something that you might see on some other microphones. And also, I wasn't able to simply adapt it from some of the ones that I had lying around in the studio. This is not an issue as the included mount is really good with highly sprung rubber bands that crisscross holding the mic solid even if it's inverted. The King B2 is XLR only. So to use it, you'll need some form of microphone amplifier and an XLR wire. I tested this with a Scarlett 2i2 3rd Gen. It's demoed here on a super cheap newer desk mount from Amazon as a use case, but it's really better suited on a microphone arm, so budget for that. Going off of their included technical sheet, they report the King B2 has an output impedance of 50 ohms, which is really great because unlike the very popular Shure SM7B with its 150 ohm output, the King B2 will be easier to drive by most amps. Simpler to drive without the use of something like a cloud lifter. It operates only as a cardioid pattern. Its large diaphragm is very well suited for spoken voiceover, singing, and any situation where you're wanting to capture a single sound source. Cardioid pattern microphones tend to reject side noises and also any room echoes of the original source. I'm not a musician, so I can't assess beyond spoken voice, but the included hexagon pop grill is removable. Let me know in the comments if you've used this microphone for instruments and how it may have performed. Large diaphragm, low noise floor microphones are great when used at low gain and close proximity. This reduces the resting noise floor, which can manifest as a constant hiss. And if you get closer and closer, you're going to get a richer, cleaner sound. Your only concern now would be what's known as a plosive. These are those heavy P popping sounds. They sound like this, P, P, P. Those can be reduced with a pop filter or simply with a bit of skill from the talent. The included pop filter that's built into the design works really well. The shape would deflect and redirect the plosives and of course a little bit of spit. The material mutes and keeps debris off the microphone grill, but unsurprisingly no pop filter is perfect. Here at Nubifier Media, I'm known for unfairly comparing mid-entry level against very high-end stuff. I often get blasted in the comments or on social media as being out to lunch in my testing methodology, but the reality is it's very simple. I use expensive gear daily, and I'm extremely familiar with how those things perform. If I test something in a much lower price point, and it's still able to offer close or similar results, then wow, right? Like that's the point. So I'm comparing the King B2 against a Shure KSM 44 Alpha in a fully treated studio, a $170 microphone against a $1,300 microphone in a fully treated room uploaded and compressed by YouTube. You probably can't even hear the difference on the video. I had no trouble telling them apart, but that's not the point. You want to stream? You want better audio for your team's meeting? You want to voice over some content? 
I'm happy with the results that the King B2 gets and it's really great quality for the money. Most likely can't tell it apart from something more expensive and if you don't want to deal with XLR, perhaps something in their USB range might be good for you. Ask me any questions you have about anything. If you'd like a more detailed conversation, consider joining the Discord so that we can communicate better. Post your thoughts in the comments and of course, if you have a neat microphone, your testimonials, either positive or negative, would be great. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. I know that this microphone will be part of my workflow in the future and no doubt, most of you will not be able to tell which is a great thing for neat. Record safe.